Welcome to the other side, the married side. Hey, it's Anfa and you're watching Anfa Vlog. Today I want to show you a new open source distortion plugin for Linux called Wolf Shaper. It's a pretty simple but very powerful processor that lets you crush your sounds with custom designed distortion functions. It has a neat graphical user interface where you can create all sorts of interesting curves. I'm using that one constantly since I was told it exists, but it's not widely known yet, so I've decided to spread the word with this video. Wolf Shaper is being developed by Patrick Desolnier who have contacted me in May 2018 saying that he's making a wave shaping plugin based on Fruity Wave Shaper by ImageLine. I was super happy to hear that because there's still nothing like Wolf Shaper in the open source music production ecosystem. There is a built-in Wave Shaper plugin in LMMS, but it's not as flexible as Wolf Shaper and it's not available outside of LMMS. There's also kind of a Wave Shaper plugin in the Alsa modular synth system, but again, it's only available inside of that system. I've been testing the plugin and providing Patrick with feedback and suggestions for improvements. Enough introduction, let's begin. To install Wolf Shaper, you can go to the project's GitHub page and download some binaries, or even better, install a PPA repository if you're running a Ubuntu-based Linux distribution. The plugin is available for Linux in LV2, DSSI, VST2 and standalone formats. Starting from version 0.1.5, there is also a Windows VST download available. For the purpose of understanding what Wolf Shaper exactly does, we're gonna work with sine waves. However, first, let's talk about the user interface, shall we? All right, so here is my Ardor 5.12 session. I have a track with a Zinfusion instance playing a nice consistent sine wave with no velocity sensing, so it's easier for us to understand what's going on. After that, I have the Wolf Shaper inserted, which is right here, as you can see when I play. It affects the sound. I'm gonna reset the curve. And after that, we have the Simple Scope plugin, which is a very nice oscilloscope by Robin Garrias. All right, so the main area of the Wolf Shaper user interface is the canvas where you can create your function. So with the left mouse button, you can move around points. You can also move the center points to change the shape of any curve segment. With the right click, you can add new points that you can then move around with the left click, left click and drag. If you right click, on the left point of a curve segment, you can open up a context menu and you can do various things like delete a point or you can change the type of the curve segments. There are four types. There is a single power, which is the default one. And it looks like this. There is the double power, which is basically the same thing, however, doubled and mirrored. There is a stairs function that creates a staircase, which is useful for decimation effects like bit reduction. And there is wave, which actually has two modes. It depends if you drag the curve up or down. So when you go down, you have a sine wave function. And the more you drag, the more cycles you fit in. But if you drag it up, you have a diode processed uh, sine wave, so, and you can also make it as dense as you want. So that's the basic functions. At any point in time, you can also easily reset your curve to the basic one, and just make sure you <laughs> do it when you really want it, because there's no undo. If you want to reset the parameters of the plugin, however, like this, and this, and this, you can just use this reset in Ardor, and that's gonna make this all go to default. When the sound comes in, Wolf Shaper will show a vertical line to indicate the input peak level. So we can tell how much you're saturating your function. I've made the Zenet sub effects 
as loud as possible without clipping so we are saturating the curve quite a bit. However, you can correct for that with the pre knob, which stands for pre-gain. So when I play a note, you can make this louder or quieter. However, this pre-gain control is somewhat limited, so you might want to increase the volume of your instrument with a different plugin, maybe a compressor, or maybe just crank it up in the instrument, in the synthesizer itself, if you don't have enough room to do it here. Speaking of the knobs, we have two more. The next is at the end, let's call it. The green knob is the post gain, which basically changes the volume but after the wave shaping occurs. Basically, if you make your sound too loud, you can turn it back down with this. Let's reset. Reset and reset. Uh, the third knob in between, the blue one, is the wet. The, the name stands for dry-wet ratio. So basically, if I make my function create square waves right now, I'm going to turn down the post gain. The dry wet control will mix the output between the original on wave shaped sound and the distorted one. So basically you can blend together the original sound which is called dry and the processed sound which is called wet. Hence dry wet. Let's reset. There's an oversampling function that'll increase the internal sampling rate of the plugin to avoid unwanted aliasing distortion. I never found myself in a need to use it, though for sure it can make Wolf Shaper a CPU hog. As you can see, it changes uh, how the waveform is done. However, I will leave this entirely to your taste. If you think it sounds smoother with oversampling, go use it. But I think that oversample function is still pretty CPU hungry. It's not considered super stable. Uh, speaking of unstable features, um, Wolf Shaper has two modes of operation. The basic mode is the unipolar mode, which basically is the symmetric mode. In that mode, the bottom left corner is the zero, and the top right corner is the one. And this is applied symmetrically both to the positive and the negative parts of our signal. Uh, let me show you. You see, the top and the bottom are perfectly symmetric. This is what is called unipolar mode. If I switch to bipolar mode, you see that the waveform is not symmetric anymore and the actual center of our, of our curve is not in the bottom left corner. It's right here in the center of the graph. If I move this here, we can see easier what's going on. You can see I can distort just the bottom part of the waveform. You see, the bottom is a square-like, but the top is still the sine wave. This is very useful and can be extremely fun, especially in sound design. Related to the unipolar bipolar mode, there is this center button. When enabled, and it's enabled by default for good reason, it will try to remove any possible DC offset uh, that has come around when we create a curve that center is not really in the center, if you know what I mean. Well, basically, if this is here, we have DC offset, and you can hear the clicks happening as I do this. There is static current flowing. Well, there is no signal. I have personally found that disabling the center and playing around with the bipolar mode can sometimes be problematic. So that's why I, I said this is unstable. The unipolar mode, I consider it to be perfectly stable. I can mess around with this all day and it doesn't crash or nothing. When I switch to bipolar mode, things can go haywire. <laughs> I mean, it crashed harder only once for me, but many times it um, produced the normals or NANs 
or some other crazy stuff that made the whole session um, just unoperable. I had to reload, just go to recent and reload my session in order to be able to continue my work. So it's not a deal breaker, but it can be a bit inconvenient at times. But well, this software is not in stable version yet, so things are gonna improve. We're almost done covering all the features. There is just one thing left, actually two things. It's these two knobs and switches. These are real-time modifiers that will distort our curve according to some functions. We have two types and each type has three variants. So we have the type bend and skew. Each one in three variants, so we have bend plus, bend minus, and bend plus minus. Also we have skew plus, skew minus, and skew plus minus. Let's start with the bend plus, which is the first one. You can see it brings the points together towards the center from the edges. Now minus, it just works in the opposite direction. It spreads them outwards from the center. And bend plus minus can go outward or inward. Now let's go to skew. Skew will push the points towards one of the sides. Skew plus will do it for the right. Skew minus will do it for the left. And skew plus minus will do it left or right. And the neutral is the middle position. Now there are two knobs and two switches. So one is for the horizontal axes and the other one is for the vertical axis. So basically you can have two of these, one on the vertical and one on the horizontal axis, and you can... And you can play around with them and automate this and make all kinds of weird stuff, or just use them to tweak your curve until it sounds great. That's all the features. In the next Wolf Shaper video, I'm gonna show you how to use Wolf Shaper in a real track. Actually, I have the track right here. I have a track right here that I made specifically for, for the short video series about Wolf Shaper. And I'm going to show you how you can use this, uh, the Wolf Shaper plugin, to enhance the sounds that we have in this track. The drums, the bass, the leads, everything special effects. We're going to use Wolf Shaper as a tool for mixing. We're going to make these sounds more interesting, more crisp. And in the third video, I'm going to use Wolf Shaper to design absolutely new sounds like we did here with sine waves, maybe possibly using some other tools, some other effects to have many different interesting things going on. So stay tuned. And if you like this video, leave it a like. If you have any questions or suggestions for the future videos, please leave them in the comments. Um, I'm reading all of that and I'm considering your ideas in my next videos. So the next video will be about Wolf Shaper. The next, next video will, will be about Wolf Shaper, but I might maybe actually interleave some other topics to not get bored. Uh, so I'm gonna try to make shorter but more defined videos. Yeah. And... I want to give big thanks to all the Patreon supporters at patreon.com slash anfa who are enabling me to dedicate more time to making videos like this one and less to doing other work. Uh, I have a full-time job as a graphic designer currently, but hopefully with your support, with the support of the community, one day this may become my full-time job. Or at least half-time job, that would be awesome. Anyway, so if you want to see more and better, more frequent videos from me, consider becoming a Patreon supporter. So, that's all for today. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!